The Canadian Federal Equalization Program is something that I have heard about every day in my riding here in Calgary for the last four years. And frankly, I hear about it from people across Western Canada. So I wanna talk about it today. Uh, for those of you who for some reason might not be aware of what this program is, I'll read you a brief description. Equalization is a federal transfer payment program that was first introduced in 1957 and was ostensibly designed to reduce the differences in revenue ge generating capacity across Canada's 10 provinces. So how this works in practice or has worked in practice is a province like Alberta, which has had a lot of natural resource development in the last um, several decades, that some of the wealth that is produced from that is transferred to the federal government in Ottawa, and then Ottawa then redistributes that money to provinces uh, that don't generate as much revenue. And the, one of the primary um, recipients of equalization has been over the years Quebec, but that has um, the provinces, the amount of provinces who are now receiving equalization as opposed to uh, paying into the program uh, has, has changed over the last several years. So why is this important? Uh, it's important because this is the under one of the underlying issues that is really, really uh, cheesing my constituents off and making them feel that uh, Canada really doesn't care about our province of Alberta. And I'm going to talk about why that's, that's changed in the last four years. Uh, equalization works when Ottawa or the federal government is doing everything in its power to ensure that there's a quality of opportunity for revenue project productions in each and every region of the country. That has not been the case in the last four years. We've seen Justin Trudeau and his liberal government put forward legislation that was designed to punish the natural resource sector in Alberta. So I've talked about it many times on this channel, but a quick recap. Justin Trudeau actually traveled abroad and you know, made, a, made a claim that he wished he could phase out the energy sector faster. There was a carbon tax that he put in place that harms our natural resources sector and does nothing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Then there were two pieces of legislation, Bill C-69, the No More Pipelines Act, and C-48, a bill that would, another piece of legislation that would hope to strand Alberta's natural resources or energy products in Canada. Um, I could list many other examples of things that Trudeau has done that has really caused our economy to take a downturn in Alberta and many of my constituents to be out of work. The fact that he politically vetoed the Northern Gateway pipeline, uh, did nothing when Obama uh, vetoed the KXL pipeline, uh, the debacle of the Kinder Morgan pipeline that we're currently in, uh, the fact that I, his entire caucus cheered when Energy East pipeline was, uh, was, was, was scuttled. The, the, we have a federal government right now who is not working towards equality of economic opportunity across this country. We have a federal government led by a man who is ideologically opposed to the development of Canada's natural resource sector. And that's not just me saying that, that is evidenced by those bills, by his own statements. So a lot of people in my province are going, what about this equalization payment program? If you don't want us to work in our jobs and in our regions, then why are you so happy, rest of Canada, to take the money and wealth that's coming out of these programs? And I think that that is a very fair conversation to have. It's something I've felt very strongly about as I've watched this happen as a parliamentarian over the last four years. This, this is the stark reality. I'm gonna give you a stat. In 2017, Ottawa collected $50.3 billion of revenue out of Alberta and only returned $28.4 billion. So here in my province, we're asking why the rest of the country, frankly, is accepting a prime minister that thinks that it's fair to punish the people who work in one of Canada's strongest industries. Many of my constituents are out of work. And yet, not look at the formula by which that funding is taken out of our province. So 
look, my first responsibility is to the people that I represent here in Calgary Nose Hill. And this is this is a this is an issue I hear almost on every door that I talk to. So I want to show you what I've been doing over the last several years to try and get this issue into mainstream discussion in the House of Commons, even though it's politically charged. I've raised this issue many times on the House of Commons floor. I sponsored a petition to have the equalization formula reviewed to scrap Bill C-69, and thousands of people, thousands of people signed paper copies of these petitions. That's how charged people are about this. So have a watch at uh, my efforts to try and bring this debate into the forefront in Parliament over the last several years. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to present a petition today on behalf of members of my community who are very frustrated with the government's punitive policies towards the energy sector, Bill C-69, right. uh, the tanker ban, the carbon tax, the vetoing, uh, political vetoing of major energy infrastructure projects and the delay on Trans Mountain Pipeline. They feel that these policies have changed the social contract for equalization in Canada and are calling upon the government to immediately cancel Bill C-69 and launch a study here, here. into the economic impact of equalization, including the examination of the formula, examination of how renewable and non-renewable resources, including energy resources, are both developed and underdeveloped, are treated in the formula, and issue a report to Canadians on the fairness, effectiveness, and outcomes of the equalization program. Thank you. Madam yes. Speaker, I'm pleased to present this petition from uh, many people across the country who are calling upon the government to immediately cancel Bill C-69, launch a study into the economic impact of equalization including the examination of the formula, uh, because they're just really tired of this government uh, telling them that they can't work, that their jobs are dirty, and they feel that the context for equalization has changed after this Prime Minister has uh, gone after jobs in the energy sector with great vigour. Thanks, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I share the frustration of members of my community who have watched this government present draconian legislation against the energy sector, and the members of my community are calling upon the government to immediately scrap Bill C-69, as well as to examine the equalization formula, which has been made untenable and unfair given this Prime Minister's uh, ideological opposition to jobs in our community. I strongly support this petition. Across Canada, who are furious with the fact that the government continues to denigrate the energy sector and cause a loss of jobs. They're also furious with the fact that they still have to pay the same levels of equalization while this government pays, uh, takes away their jobs. So I'm pleased to uh, table this petition calling upon the government to immediately cancel Bill C-69 and launch a study into the economic impact of equalization, including the examination of the formula, examination of how renewable and non-renewable resources, including energy resources that are both developed and undeveloped, are treated in the formula, and issue a report to Canadians on the the fairness, effectiveness, and outcomes of the equalization program. Thank you. I think petitions. Well, member for Calgary knows Hill. Mr. Speaker, um, the residents of my community are tired of their jobs being called dirty, and they're tired of the punitive policies of this government, Bill C-69, the tanker ban, which are designed to shut down the energy and sector and prevent them from working. Many, uh, so I'm pleased to table a petition today on behalf of the residents of my community who are asking the government to review the equalization formula and also issue a report to Canadians on the fairness, effectiveness, and outcomes of the equalization program, given their uh, extremely punitive policies towards the energy sector. They're tired of this. Thank you. I'm here today to table a position on behalf of my community. Uh, many people have expressed their extreme displeasure that I share with the state of the equalization formula in Canada, given that the government has tabled punitive legislation against Alberta's energy sector. Many people in Alberta feel that the equalization formula is no longer justified in its current state, and therefore I table a, a petition on behalf of my community asking the government to cancel Bill C-69 and launch a study into the economic impact of the equalization formula. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, um, my constituents are furious with the government uh, attempting to pass Bill C-69, the No More Pipelines Act, uh, and they're similarly furious with having to pay equalization payments under the current formula, given all of the efforts of this government to stop the development of Canada's natural resources sector, spe specifically the energy sector. Enough is enough, Mr. Speaker. 
the context has changed. It's not fair for people in my province to pay equalization under the same formula, given the punitive policies that this government has put forward. And I'm pleased to present this petition on behalf of my community to uh, calling on the government to immediately cancel Bill C-69 and to launch a study into the economic impact of equalization, including an examination of the formula. Thank you. Here today on the day where the Prime Minister rejected the advice of six provinces and over 59% of the population to uh, accept the amendments on Bill C-69, I'm pleased to present a petition on behalf of people in my province who are asking the government to cancel Bill C-69 and launch a study into the economic impact of equalization and an examination of the, of the formula. I agree with these petitioners. The equalization uh, formula cannot continue in its current form as long as this government keeps uh, putting policy forward to kill the energy sector. Thank you. Speaker, um, on behalf of um, just hundreds and hundreds of people who have signed this petition who are so frustrated with this government's policy to destroy Canada's energy sector through bills like Bill C-69 and C-48. Uh, these petitioners are calling on the government to review the equalization formula given the punitive policies against the Alberta energy sector. This is a petition that I support. They're also calling on the government to scrap Bill C-69. Uh, it's crazy. Thank you. Madam Speaker, especially in light of uh, the announcement yesterday by the Prime Minister on the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which re-announced a project, had absolutely no start date or any sort of plans to actually build the thing. I'm presenting a petition on behalf of my constituents who would like to see Bill C-69, the No More Pipelines Bill, repealed, as well as the government review the equalization formula, given the punitive policies that this government and positions that this government has taken against Canada's energy sector. I support this petition. It's uh, my privilege to present a petition on behalf of my constituents in Calgary Nose Hill, for which I thank them deeply for the privilege and honour of serving them for the last four years. And the petition is calling on the government to cancel Bill C-69 and launch a study into the economic impact of equalization, including the examination of the formula, examination of how renewable and non-renewable resources, including energy resources, are both developed and underdeveloped, are treated in the, in the formula, and issue a report to Canadians on the fairness, effectiveness, and outcomes of the equalization program. Madam Speaker, if you drove to work in Calgary this morning, these were the stories that you would hear on the radio. You would hear about the impact of the Trans Mountain Pipeline delay on the local economy. You'd hear about how Bill C-69 is killing investment in the energy sector. You'd hear about how the impact on the, from the price differential on oil is killing the energy sector. You'd hear about stagnant wage growth in the city, and you'd hear about high unemployment numbers that are continuing. My constituents and my province need this government to immediately kill Bill C-69. This is a key determinant to investment uh, being uh, fleeing the province, and it needs to stop today. They need to invoke Section 9210C uh, of, of the Constitution to ensure that the Trans Mountain Pipeline is completely within federal jurisdiction, and they need to step, scrap the carbon tax. Most importantly, this government needs to stop treating Alberta like a colony whose only purpose is to be milked for equalization payments. I'm honoured to fight for the people of my riding, Calgary Nose Hill, because they work hard and they contribute much to the prosperity of Canada. For many, that means working in a job in the energy sector. However, they've suffered as this Prime Minister vetoed the Northern Gateway Pipeline, purposefully mismanaged the still unbuilt TMX pipeline, chased away any hope of investment in the energy sector with Bill C-69, landlocked Canadian energy with Bill C-48, told the world that he wished he could phase out the energy sector faster, celebrated when his efforts killed the Energy East pipeline, and refused to reopen the equalization formula after killing our jobs. This is not nation-building policy. This is anti-Alberta policy. A message to the Prime Minister and the anti-energy left on behalf of the people in my riding. We've had enough. Continue on this path, and it's you who do so, at the detriment of our Confederation. I can't even tell you how frustrating it is as a Calgary MP um, to stand up over and over and over again um, and, and, and just watch this Liberal government completely uh, ignore uh, the plight of my province and my people. Uh, the responsibility of a Prime Minister, it doesn't matter where your riding is or what's politically popular, is to put in place programming that's in best interests, the best interests of the entire country. And if one region is going to suffer, 
and another is going to benefit because of that suffering, or if you're going to benefit because of that suffering, then you can't do that. You know, that's something that Trudeau fundamentally doesn't understand, is that the job of the Prime Minister is to serve the Canadian public, not the other way around. And these policies that Trudeau has put in place, C-69, C-48, they are divisive. They are dividing our country. And it is at his hand that this is happening. So, you know, you've sat through and you've watched this. And if you're living in any other part of the country and you know somebody who votes Liberal, you have to understand that these bills, C-69, C-48, and the plight and the suffering of my community matter to you. My community needs you to stand up and tell Justin Trudeau that it is not okay to do what he did. Among the many things that I could be talking to you about, his, his ethics violations, SNC-Lavalin, um, you know, the fact that we're in a multi-billion dollar deficit, you know, his failure in the immigration system, if there's one thing I can implore to you, and I've tried to, to, to emphasize in my actions in the House of Commons in leading this debate, is that Canada, if Canada is going to be greater than the sum of its parts, then every part of this country needs to hold Justin Trudeau to account for this type of divisive policy, where he is punishing one part of the country versus another. The reality is, is that if this was, if you know, the, the downturn in the Alberta economy was a ketchup factory or a manufacturing plant in southwestern Ontario, the entire country would be on fire at the injustice of this. And look, I, 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 want, I want people in South, who are in man manufacturing in southwestern Ontario to have jobs. We could have a whole other conversation about why that sector is faltering under Trudeau as well. But the reality is, is that if you live in Toronto, if you live in Atlanta, Canada, if you live in BC and you don't care about this issue, you have to. Because the people in my community need you to stand up and hold Justin Trudeau to account. So that when I go to each and every door that I, you know, I try and hit every door in my community, when I'm having a town hall and I have my community come up to me and say, the rest of Canada doesn't care about us, you have to show them that that's not the case. And this, you know, this issue is a big one. Share this video with people and, and show them that this is something that is bigger than Alberta. It's bigger than Western Canada. It really is a question about turning down the divisive policies that Trudeau has put in place and rejecting them in order to keep our country whole. Working hard for you in Calgary. Have a great day.